there, everyone, and welcome back to the mod that is making my hair turn white and gray, sort of like Albert Speer's, but we must read about, break it down, build it again. Victor Lutsenko held the letter in his hands tightly. He was an older gentleman, so his hands shook a little as he did so, but he could make the, out the letters clearly. This morning, he had received an envelope from a shockingly friendly German man, who he assumed to be a dude from the government, saying that he had been given a generous offer from or by the Rada. Whatever that generous offer was, he wasn't keen on accepting it. It was nice to simply live peacefully in his home with his wife who while his two sons were out and about, but he decided not to discard the letter immediately. Dear Victor Lutsenko, it's come to our attention that you have been regarded as a prolific mathematics professor. Oh, your former working residence with the Taras Shevchenko University, which was demolished in, in the accidental, uh, pa, accidental artillery fire during the Second World War. However, the university is undergoing a massive reconstruction project that will be authentic to the original, and will need employees for it when it opens. His gaze narrowed. We wish to re-employ you at the university for just a t tidy salary of... His eyes widened that much? He could feed his entire family with that money. Though we will make it clear that some of your co-workers shall be of German background, we do hope that you do not discriminate. Victor felt disgust rise in his throat, but the offer was so tempting, perhaps he did admit to himself. Constantly being at home could get boring. And he's always enjoyed teaching mathematics, interacting with the children, drawing out various formulas, both simple and meticulous, on the green board. The longer he thought about it, the more he felt accepting the letter. By midnight, he was already drawing up lessons in his head. Because, right now. Even though I have my tirade yesterday, and probably the episode before that, and maybe even the episode before that, we have actually been able to get to <clears throat> the Rada, which last time we took this this path, but I, I waited a little longer, and we were able to get uh, enough regime stability, which we're currently at 40% to do this. So, uh, actually, I think I was from, from the, the Resurrect Ukrainian Academia. We've done Back to the West. We're doing finishing touches, and I know we're basically replaying the, the little portion from the last video, but it is what it is. And also, as you can see from here, Romania will be ours. So... Uh, not too bad. Like I said, we got some uh, comments to go through. Uh, let's keep that up for now. And actually, right now, our, because we went down with the Ukrainian route, actually, this was just enough with it here for the Rada to push us over to the edge to get an in-between social outlook. So thank God that's over for now. Progressing at 8.15%. Not bad. Finishing touches. And let's finish this out like we did yesterday. If you'd like to read this again, please go right ahead. Because this has been one heck of a campaign so far, and I still have not used console commands. Now, I'm never going to live stream this. I will, I'd rather live stream me playing Hadrish again. I'm never going to live stream this campaign, uh, or spare, at least in the, its current state. So, yeah, I, I'd love to show you, like, I'd love to show you, like, the three hours I've spent doing this campaign. Like, just trying to, like, get everything to do this. So, but... At this point, holding speeches, we need to save our political power because we do need to dismantle the mega corporations and such like that. So we'll get there eventually. It is still mid-66, so not too bad. But a couple comments. Um, yeah, basically someone was asking, or basically I'll let you guys know, addressing one of the comments from yesterday is like, we're going full reform for this, this part of the campaign. Full reform, 100%, nothing like it. And now we're trying to get closer and closer to being more and more uh, reformist. Oh, that's actually not too bad. So we have a s strongly conservative monthly tick and in-between pivot. Hey, if it goes up, Please, keep going. 47.8. Let's order the swastika. Cool. I think I already read this one, so... They'll come and there will be millions up. So if you want to read that again, please go right ahead. Good. And... Oh, the WRR. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, Indonesia won. So, yeah, there's that. 49% um, dinner with the giants. I already read that one yesterday, too. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Uh, we don't really need to play this one. I, I'm... Trust me, you won't get the chance to. Cool. And for this one, I don't mind doing this, but I'm not going to spend political power for this stuff, so. Um, it, it doesn't matter. We already won, so I don't really care, I'll be honest. So, I think yesterday we started off with this one. So, if you want to read this one again, please go ahead. It's going to auto-bypass. And then, if you want to read about this one, please go ahead as well. Cartel Gazettes. So, now we can focus on these different companies down here. What is this? Antitrust Directive. We have so many slaves in the Reich. Holy crap. Almost 40 million. Jesus Christ. Skilled workforce is not enough. 22% of the theoretically available workforce of 77 million people. Jesus Christ, guys. What do we do here? Um, middle class investments. Investing in the fledgling local middle class will weaken the grasp of the Wehrwirtschaftsführer. Hold over it. The less slaves are present in the region, the more efficient this action becomes. For the Rhineland, of course. Uh, that's so many slaves. Seize corporate assets. Um... 
Seizing the corporate assets from the Wehrmacht uh, Sch with the help of the Wehrmacht is inefficient, albeit brutal, way to lessen their influence. One month cooldown. I've heard this one's actually really good to do. An antitrust directive. I'm not sure what that, how you do that one, but what happens if we like get rid of all the slaves in one region? Because Norway obviously doesn't have that many slaves. Germany proper has way too many slaves. Way too many slaves. If anything, I just want to send them to Muscovine so they can all die over there. Or, maybe, or be liberated. Liberated. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Um... I don't know, maybe seize corporate assets? I'm not sure what this does. Oh, 5.8 million. Uh, what do we do over here, too? We have the PP and command power port, so 5.826. Oh, wait, Reichsvaka. 92%. Okay, um, 100% over there. 100%, 100%, 100%. Is that worth doing all the time? I'm not sure if we should focus on one at a time or not, so. Hey, I might have to replay this episode off screen as well, but whatever. So it's currently at 49.2%. It's going to go... Any oh, across the Alps. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Stay at the Reich. If you would like to read that, please go ahead. Cool. 90... 49.2. Rise and shine, Herr Vessel. To my second command in the R&D, Gehag Vessel, I wish to congratulate you for getting here. Now, celebrations aside, you will be assigned a critical mission. With the Bureau of Vessel under control, it's imperative that you research extensively the subverting forces that have cropped up under the new regime led by Führer Abo Daddy. The first, critically, is the anti fascistische Aktion. Being one of the most vocal opponents of national daddyism, they were purported as exterminated under the leadership of Führer Adolf Hitler. But unfortunately, we've been mistaken. We know little of them yet, so uncovering their degenerative Bolshevik groups is important. Secondly, is the exponential ramp up of the student movement in Germany. We have firm reason to believe that, while they are backed by Antifa. They form the backbone of the reformist movement in Germany. With this, a double-pronged problem has been formed. We do not have limitless resources, and focusing on one is better than spreading ourselves thin on both. Well, I advise you to focus on the former. As you were first in command, I have left the choice to you, Herr Vessel. The Bolshevik Antifa, as they form the nucleus of the reformist movement. The students, as without them, there will be no popular support to continue processing. I don't know which one's right, but... Uh, honestly, this whole Antifa thing, like, in this timeline, it sounds like it could just be, like, a cover for... The actual organization. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, procuring the guilty. I'm not really sure, man. I really don't know. I guess I'll do this one, I guess. Why not? You know. Um, uh, let's see. 64%. That's okay. It's just, it's so little. I don't want to do a mission and just end up being unsuccessful. There was another comment saying that do you have other types of missions to do stuff? Unter Neiman Schwarz. So, we can't do these texts yet. Disappear reactions would be kind of nice, but whatever. Um, we actually get political power out of that, but it does lower regime stability eventually. I uh, step down here, employ, employ Entecker satellites. Same thing for here, same thing for America. Even though there's Exxon and Spahedler. Spa so, there, there, there are unique missions for different regions. Oh, Neven Kitzel. 56% is just not good enough for me. Zingvogel. So, that was one of the comments from yesterday too, as well. So, cool. And let's scroll a little bit further back up. And someone also told me to do the decisions for Asia. Uh, it's a little bit too late, I think, for now, but procuring the guilty. To Agent Gehad Vessel, top secret information regarding the anti fascist Action. The information we have gathered has resulted in us splitting the organization of Antifa into two parts. One, the core of Antifa, comprised of roughly 30 members, their ideology is primarily Marxism with a rabid anti-Nazi hatred and sympathy to Judaism and non-German cultures. Their locations have been not narrowed down to only a few cities, and we can assume that they are present in only one of them. The outliers of Antifa comprise of student gatherings in several high-value cities around Germany, while not as radical as their potential ties into other the and to the Antifa core. There are two options available. The first is infiltrating the core of Antifa and attempting to assassinate their leaders without, with extre while extremely risky. This will cripple their movement from within. The second is to frame the students group as radicalized or radicalized bloodthirsty communists as most members of the protest are either reformists or degenerate counterculture Germans. They would turn against this new portrayal of Antifa. This is up to you, Herr Vessel. May Germany be safe in, be in safe hands. The center will crumble and the rest will follow. Rot will touch the surface and spread to the rest of the body. The insider is the outsider. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Fleiss? Weiss height? Council of Gods. Current of Machines. That's not bad. Conglomerate of Steel. Core of Arms. Efforts against these groups will increase. Um, New German Worker. Ooh, look at that. Traditional roles, roles with women in the workplace. Okay, that's not terrible. Seeds of a Thousand Fires. Ooh, I like that one. Limitless Potential. Segregation. Seed of Pressure and Segregation. Uh, treating Wounds. Let's do Fleiss. 
As much as one wish it wasn't so, taking down the mecha corporations will be difficult to accomplish solely via direct means. We have to keep in mind that breaking them is only half the battle. If the people aren't able to capitalize on their fall, then the effort will be wasted. The fear won't be happy, but it's time to take another bite out of our treasury. While the people are kept afloat by welfare and subsidies, we need a good yet solid jolt to the heart of our economy to keep it pumping. A whole crap load of money is how Schmidt phrased, phrased it. I can't vouch for the man's manners, but that's the gist of it. A massive dose of cash for the middle class will give us a short-term boost we need to stay fungally functional while dealing with the corporations, which is fine with us. Cool. Cartel uh, Gazettes. Cigar smoke waves strongly in the room as Ludwig Herhard flicked open a lighter to continue the trend of making it just a bit more difficult to breathe in the room. In front of the man with a plan, reading over a document sat Big Daddy himself, Albert Speer. He had been holding a hand to the side of his head, occasionally stopping up to gaze at a certain piece of text before either sighing or rubbing his forehead and continuing. Herr Erhard, the old Führer began, taking a look at the minister who seemed to look at just a bit happier when they, when they met eye to eye. This law of yours, the Scatelgesetz, how do you propose we push this through? After all, the most effective would be for the four biggest co companies in Germany and... And what, mein Führer? Erhard calmly shot back, puffing the cigar and pulling it out of his mouth. What would they do about it? Complain? Certainly they would. Erhard stopped up, blowing out some smoke and taking another puff. Puff, puff. But consider this, they would practically be admitting to keeping each other in business in a big charade and that small grin approached his lips. <clears throat> that wouldn't reflect so well on the Aryan spirit, now would it, he said, almost seeming to be mocking the notion of such a thing. Speer glanced at and glared back at if, as if Erhard just gutted an animal in front of him, but eventually took a deep breath, and then an even a deeper sigh. If you would be so kind to, li to listen, he strained, subconsciously pressing a thumb down on the document, I can tell you that they have tools at their disposal, allies, influence. If we begin with something like this, then we run the risk of... Erhard chuckled, shutting the fear up quickly, throwing the used-up cigar out into a nearby trash. Many simply crossed their arms and shook his head. Hostility, yes. But this is the easiest way to begin approaching them. If you don't want the right to be dominated by giant corporations that effectively run the state for you, my fear, then suggest that you take my suggestion, or I'm afraid that my ideas end here. Speer wanted to say something, something that could turn the case against Erhard, but there was nothing. If he hadn't had a medical checkup recently, he swore he would have felt an aneurysm coming. And believe me, my fear, I have a lot more than just a dismantlement of cartels in mind. The old minister's gaze sharpened in, and Speer felt like he could read exactly what the man had in mind. What have I gotten myself into? Lots of reforms. A new decision category is enabled. The economic GUI's actions against corporations become activated. Oh, is there another GUI? Oh, we have this one. I mean, don't get me wrong, I want to do this stuff, but... <clears throat> the more action. Two-week cooldown, one week, one month cooldown. Um, antitrust. Can we do... I guess we do this one uh, once we get to 0% here. Because there's not that many slaves here. What do we do that one? Does that do too much? Because if there's like f very few slaves, I don't mind doing it. Oh, that doesn't do very much. Now does it. 98.7 drops down to what? 23! Whoa! Alright, well, whatever. Cool. Alright, anything else? I mean, we'll still do the propaganda stuff. Hey, look, 50%. I don't want to... Uh, this one not, wouldn't be too bad. Uh, increase it by 20%. You get more weekly stability, which we don't really need too much. We do lose some national socialism support. Um, we can probably do that one. That's fine for us right now, right? It's probably fine. Do it whenever we can, right? Cool. Synthetic oil. Yes, please. Because when the oil crisis hits, it's going to be really bad for us. Anything else? No. Alright. Hold a speech. No, hold it. That's fine to do it as well. 49%. I don't want to spend, hold a speech anymore, so... More armor is very nice. Cool. And how's this looking? Six. Send missile launches. There you go. I don't care. I really don't care. Cool. After this one, uh, I do want to do this though, because any things we do against the governments, or not, they're not governments, but the corporations, I want to hit them as hard as we can. Oh, we need more stability here too. Oh, that's not good. So we got to keep an eye on regime stability, but at least it's not going to go down anymore, which is really, really good actually. Um, repatriations will be enhanced. The lives to save. Conservative bonuses, less factory output, more military factory construction speed. Rex effects limited privatization. That's not bad. Much to give. Oh, must be vulnerable for us to take action. Oh, regime stability will go up. Uh, just because this is the this part of the tree is what we have to focus on first. The skilled workforce will benefit from this. Was a social market, social state. Probably do this one, right? Social market? Well, let's do Council of Gods now. Ooh. That's not bad, actually. I like this one. I definitely like this one. Current 
of machines. Siemens bears the dubious honor of being the least repulsive and corrupt of the mega corporations. Some mistake this for honor or kindness on the part of their chief executive, Ernst von Siemens. They are fools. Von Siemens' ha was nothing in his mind, save for greed and a lust for yet more wealth. They make use of slaves, though not nearly to the same extent as their peers. I suppose it's a point in their favor, though not reason enough to trust them. Still, they've proven the least opposed to our economic reforms in an intention to abolish slavery, solely, of course, because they have the least to lose. Still, we shouldn't refuse their overtures if they can still be useful to us. We'll hear von Siemens out and turn his sense of self-preservation to our purposes. He knows that there'll be heck to pay if he betrays us. Perhaps that alone will keep the cowardly snake in line while we dismantle his cartel. <laughs> oh, let's hope so. Anything else down here? Not yet. Oh, what is this? Enact the conjunctor pocket? Oh my goodness, what is that? It only costs a hundred million dollars every month. Ah, that's nothing. The German people have grown complacent on the backs of slaves and as a result have failed to develop a self-reliable, self-sufficient economy. In order to ensure the survival of the Reich, plans must be put in place to order to create a sustainable economic environment within Europe. Slaves will no longer be seen as a necessity, but rather as an outdated practice which will be eventually phased out by the incorporation of hard-working German people into the industrial workplace. I don't care how much money it costs, we're doing it. Hey, 52.% So as long as we're not losing any, that's good uh, I wonder if we're actually getting more Do we get actually more regime stability if we actually go to like Slightly conservative or, I mean slightly reformist Okay, 4 out of 1 We just got up to 10, we won So I'll close out of that, I don't want to see that stuff anymore I, mm, Or at least that one The great game, I'm really not interested in the great game at all I'll be honest When if we have all this stuff going on, I'll look at that Yes please, yes please, spend more money Money means nothing to me right now because look at our GDP growth 15% Yeah baby Anyways, um, I need to see allies. Regime stability will go up. Seems it must be vulnerable for us. But let's get some more research speed and civilian construction speed. International competitor. And despite its nature as a cartel, there remains much a one can begrudgingly admire about Siemens. Their innovations in the field of home electronics, computing, and machinery are comparable to those of the Americans and Japanese. Only von Siemens' corruption and the reliance on slavery for manufacturing has kept them from becoming a global leader to outshine the best of Guangdong's corporations. We shall exploit Siemens' more useful tendencies, even as we continue to diminish the power. God willing, we can turn this wretched hive of villainy into something useful that we can be proud of only once. They've been cut down to a more acceptable size, of course. Nothing else there. Good, good, good. I'm feeling better about this already, so. Token political promises. Wow. 82%. I'm I'm not ready to cry, but, like, holy crap. We're actually at 82%. I could... <laughs> I'll be honest, at the end of the last episode, I, like, I talked to my Discord, so I'm ready to beat somebody regarding the regime's stability. I, I was pissed off, man. I was seriously pissed off. But, we're doing better now. And if it's Siemens, right, that we're kind of beating up, we're going to beat up Siemens. S Siemens, yeah, Siemens. Um, down the bends, Siemens. Where are you? Are you green, huh? Yeah, we're going to beat you up here. Uh, it's a hundred percent. What does that mean? Like, uh, just corporation take over? Um, really, Siemens doesn't own that much, so no wonder they're, it's kind of easy for us to take them out. Mm, Ten million dollars. Can we do that anywhere else? Or do we just do this overall? Like, well, let's do this anyway since we're here. Oh, antitrust. Once the Wehrwirtschaft's sphere of power over the region reaches zero, the government can pass a directive to oust them from the economic control over the region. No cartel, my friends, we've got it. Siemens is at 80%. Alright, do it again. Oh, it's costing, oh, costing so much PP. Whoopsie. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, maybe we won't do this too much to an extreme amount. So, yeah, we gotta keep an eye on our PP then. Storm der Maschinen. Are the four mega corporations that stand out on air house sidelines? Or sight lines. It is only Siemens that shows itself to be potentially redeemable, while the rest are brutally unforgiving slaveholders run by power hungry rulers. Ernst von Siemens is a strange case. He is far more saying than his competitors, or competition, relying on advanced industries that naturally use little slave labor. It comes to no surprise then, as Wag Erhard believes that out of all the mega corporations dominating Germany, Siemens stands out as a sole exemption of a company that doesn't have to be fully dismantled. In fact, quite the opposite. If the minister played his cards right, he could potentially get a powerful ally on his side. But that's not to say they're completely innocent. Von Siemens has gone his way to the top after all. Which does not mean he relied purely on honest business practices and sheer skill instead. He has signed, it has signed into a contract with every other factory to form cartels, now placing themselves in a position where they can remain untouchable by anyone who isn't wholly massive as they are. The Siemens empire prospers greatly at the top, but isn't quite certain how they will react when Erhard begins his plans. There's only one way to find out, however. The structural integrity of one of the empires that wishes to step forward in the future. They will be judged just like the rest. And we, or God, will judge them. And we'll do it happily. Nice. So, I don't know. I mean, I might have to change this stuff up later on. But, you know what? Just in case. 
We're gonna do this one too, just because I want to hit down the rebellions as hard as we can. Down the rebellions hides behind a veneer of respectability, maintaining a relatively small industrial presence compared to its competitors. They've never been competitive internationally. The largest overseas presence they have is the motor pools of despots and dictators. Within the Reich, though, they are a wolf in sheep's clothing, keeping their operations quiet and their number of slaves relatively low. The reality is, however, that they represent something far worse than a humble, medium-sized conglomerate. Their CEO, Friedrich Flick, has fingers in every pile, or every pie, while Dalmo Ben strives to remain as inoffensive as possible. Flick wastes no opportunity to further enrich himself and solidify the slave system. Through intermediaries and stocks, he owns millions of slaves in some of the most brutal labor camps and factories in the Reich he has to offer. He is responsible for the untold suffering and by extension, so is, so is his cartel, worst of all. He was a major donor to the SS, footing the crimes for his own benefits. He is a criminal and a traitor both, and will be dealt with as such. I'm sorry about me just speaking fast, it's just like... I'm excited for this. Now, my enthusiasm has definitely improved since the last time I played this yesterday. Or at least the time I was recording it's yesterday. So, I'm feeling a little better about this, but still. Still. Um, over here. Over here. Um, yeah, maybe it was best to wait for this one in the middle first. We just need more command power. Uh, I want to get rid of the Siemens one first, because it seems pretty pretty good to take get rid of. So, actually, I'm actually kind of excited for that. But let's do this one, because I want to improve poverty. Uh, Gessling Kirchen. Essen. Dortmund, Mülheim. Germany's once renowned coal and steel centers were hit the hardest by the economic crash of the 50s, after all. Why pay a free laborer to toil in the mines and foundries when a slave can do it free? A slave will not balk and increase hours or dare to pr protest when his fellows are crushed or burned alive in an industrial accident. I'll admit, free workers can be unruly at times, but that's nothing compared to the inhumanity of industrial slavery. Thankfully, things are returning to normal in the Fuhrer and other such areas. Free workers are rapidly displacing slaves due to mandated employment quotas and the establishment of independent industrial Mittelstein companies. Factories abandoned by the mega corporations in favor of of industrial slave camps are firing up once again. We'll continue our support of these liberated industries and un and do un and do unto the corporations as they did unto our economy and decades past. Propaganda campaign ended. Bread and circuses? No, no, no. And actually, don't forget this. Cut. Spending cut. Oh, that's looking a lot better. That's looking a lot better now. Wow. All right, my friends. Campaign propaganda. We love it. If you repeat a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. Oh, we have no more peepee. Um, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna wait then. I'm gonna get all the way up to 100, and then we're gonna burn our PP, which sounds actually really painful, but that's alright. We get, what, one sum, almost roughly two a day? That's not too bad. So, we're gonna go max out that PP first. PP, we just don't have enough. Because I want maxed out social outlook. Oh, did I, was I not supposed to click? There we go, cool. Okay, there we go. Whee. You know, I'll be, oh, wait, I'm gonna that one. I'll be honest here, like, I was thinking about the whole te technology thing here. And I, even though I didn't like Hoi 3 that much at all, like, I know I never played on this channel. I I honestly didn't even play it that much in my own time back uh, when I was in high school and early college. But uh, I, I always miss that system of leaders. You can spend points into leadership, into research. Um, and there's two other areas you could spend your total amount of pool points to invest into, into that stuff. So I kind of wish that system was, was maybe more integrated into Hoi 4, but whatever. Waffen uh, Giant. Friedrich Flick is an oddity, a threat, and perhaps stands as an even more dangerous man than Hermann Josef Abs. Though Flick's empire, Dalmo Benz, is not particularly expansive, it is the Verwehr Chasseurs that keeps the cogs of the machine well oiled and turning consistently. For what he lacks in size, Flick makes up for it by cutting through the stock market and working company owned slaves for every last drop of blood. He is merciless and a prime example of a Nazi brought into the modern generation, but that is not why he's so dangerous. An Erhard's eyes being connected to the black heart of Europe known as Oldenstadt Bürgen is already a horrific sin. Flick, however, goes above and beyond that. Being a man who's directed ties to the abomination that leads the whole project, Heinrich Himmler. Oh, Heine. Not only that, but Erhard knows that he has just directly supported the cause of the SS with monetary compensation, and in so, in, the, in order to further the Einheit Pact of the devilish ideology known as the Burgundian system, Erhard must strike hard at Friedrich Flick and his empire. Stains must be cleansed. We actually got more... <clears throat> Jesus. If you told me we'd get 100% in the last episode, or the episode before that, I would have probably punched the wall. Mm, give us one more day. There we go. Or maybe one more day. I'm going to get to 100. Cool. Nice. And I probably can do that almost immediately. The new German worker? Um, we don't get any more... Ah, uh, we help our society. At least Herr Speer has a head for selling our ideas. In truth, the new German worker isn't just as new the propaganda posters he, he says he is. It's really just a return to the old normal when the Mittelstand was the basis of the economy and ordinary working class men could find good honest employment. However, a victory means a victory. The reality is that both the working and middle classes are back in earnest. No longer is German society so heavily stratified between haves and have-nots. 
The Reich Wirtschafts Ministerium must continue to support the renewal of a liberal social structure in both word and deed. The prosperity of the people is the first and best line of defense against the greed and treachery of the mega corporations. I think I said this last time too, but like I can see why Penkin gave up on just making campaigns after <laughs> you played Spare, and I'm like, okay, he's on episode 13, and he, just, and he says he's just done. He's just done. And I think this this type of campaign killed him. I could be wrong, but I think that's what happened. Disappear reactionaries. Ooh. Regime stability goes down, but less national daddies. We did get some political power, though. Ooh, we, we, we can do that one. I kind of want to do this one. The anti-reformist clique of the NSDAP is getting uppity. There is, however, a solution. Something that's been used ever since the dawn of political institutions. The most vocal voices that demand outrageous things from us are nothing more than enemies of the state. We'll make sure that R&D as some of them meet their fate sooner rather than later. Is this... This seems like it could backfire on us. Let's try it anyways. And I did this one just because it gave us the most success chance, because I do want to do these missions. Uh, 5%, uh, 5%, 5%, because I know this one, the radio gave us 10%. Truth Serum, 5%, Research Speed, um, Growth, let's do this, Truth Serum. So let's say we come back here, and this one would be what? 64%, 64%, anything in Africa? Probably not too much, no, nothing down there. How about here in Russia, no. Um, 60% uh, is really not good. 62%, yeah, I mean, it's not very good. Yeah, there's not really much here. 64%. Eh. Alright, anything else up north? Because now we got to save our peepee. -pee. I'd love to do... Uh, we don't even do that anymore. Strongly reformist. Uh, the new German Wilka. Ah, yes, good. Alright, up next. Land of Diligence? We lose... Oh, God. Oh, poverty getting better, though. The well, conjurator packet needs to be finished before we can make this decision. Which I, we already did earlier because it was down here. So that's good. Infrastructure, yes, please. All right, land doctrine, military stuff. I, I'll be honest; I, you can tell from my voice, I'm actually enjoying this a lot more um, than the last few episodes. <laughs> Mass privatization, money to gain. Uh, new conglomerate of steel. Or we don't go down here. I can't go down here. Let's do the vice height. Thanks to Hitler's me megalomania. It's not just Germany I find myself responsible for. The entirety of this Third Reich, from the Rhine to the Volga, falls under my jurisdiction when it comes to economic matters. That's all tall, or even for me, still I will persevere, and this responsibility is too great to neglect, and the potential for a brighter pan-European future lives on beneath all the muck of slavery and bloodshed. Eastern Europe makes up a huge portion of our territory and wider hegemony, but it has been systematically misused ever since it was conquered. Ukraine has so much more to offer than just wheat, and the Caucasus, what a sorry mess! That all that oil dredged up by the natives in utterly inhumane conditions, while the industrial barons grow fat on the profits that should be enriching the ones doing the work. To heck with the party, I'll get Eastern Europe the future it deserves if it's the last thing I do. Followed up with what? Limitless potential. Uh, I don't, I don't kind of care about that bandit deed. Uh, Council of Gods. Oh no, we need. Oh crap, that's gonna take a long time to do. Conglomerate to steal them. Reichsvecker, family Reichsvecker, Hem and Goring is not actually a private company, but may as well be one anyways, given the enormous amount of influence and autonomy they possess. Having such a large conglomerate under state control would normally stifle its profits, but Reichsvecker possesses a monopoly on steel, coal, and other heavy industries. Combine that with the fact that they are remarkably good at avoiding their taxes, and you have a recipe for a truly abominable cartel. Reichsvecker owns massive numbers of slaves, not quite as many as IG Fabin, but still numbering the millions. These are some of the most pitiful, poorly trained peoples in the entire system, forced to work in dangerous mines, foundries, and factories for as long as their overseers demand. Reichsvecker slaves are chewed up and spat out as the corpses by the deadly meat grinder of industry, leaving thousands dead every year as executives and their friends at NSDAP and their bureaucracy grow ever richer. We must slay this beast of iron and blood, no matter the cost. Anything down here? Oh, what is it? Oh. Huh, expertise is 100. 74% chance. Ooh, I, uh, mm, mm, I want to do one of these. I'll do one of these. You know what? You know what? How about we save? You know what? You and me. We save. I'll show you my saves. Uh oh, look at that. It's an Ita campaign. Ita! And the Soviet campaign. Oh boy, what am I playing at this time? Okay, so let's do Gehilfa. It's been here for a long time. As it became known, the Cadillos of the Iberian Union delegated the governing responsibilities to the Iberian Council, a single legislative body representing different nations and classes of the country. What is in our best interest to protect our council from the monopoly of Cadillos, our leadership is concerned about the possibility of liberal dominance in the Iberian politics. Using our assets in Iberia, we can influence various factions within the council to work for our favor. I hope we don't fail. But even if it does, Iberia always fails, so I, don't, I won't feel too bad about that. Alright, let's see. So... Uh, we don't have enough command power, so god dang it. I want to keep doing this one, but the less slaves there are, there's a million slaves here. There you go. That's that's actually not too bad, just because there's not that many slaves there anyways. <sighs> we need to see these corporate assets. 54%. I don't know why I'm focusing on semen so much. I guess getting rid of one of these would be really good, good first. Is it better to lower everyone at a steady rate, or is it better just to focus on one guy and then cut, uh, cut and just like kill the, all the rest of them off later on? I really don't know. 
So I'm gonna come back here once we have more command power. Can go to seal. We're at 93%. Jesus. Oh my gosh. Investing in Poland. Oh. Wow. Uh, there, there's a large unstated need for economic investment in infrastructure within Poland. The erroneous and short-sighted general Osplan Os, upon with the mass enslavement of the Polish people, has turned Poland into a backwards hellscape. If we're to bring about a new era of peace and stability in the East, we must first look into improving and developing new infrastructure to further financial growth within the region. Oh. Oh, that comes at the cost of everything else. Oh, that's cost PP. Oh, well, crap. I shouldn't have done Poland. That's alright, whatever. Poland, they could probably deserve it. It's alright. I might need that PP back, though. It's alright. We'll get more PP back. We will. Um, I don't mind doing this one, but at this point, 93% is already really good, so. The Great French Game. Oh, crap. Uh, if you already read about that, please go ahead. Yet yeah, another round begins. God dang it. Ah. Actually, you know, someone, someone did say in the comments from last episode, can I show you the factions? I, and someone did ask if I could show you the factions at the end of the campaign or the end of the video, so. The Ionized Pack is not looking bad. It's pretty unified. I mean, we've got almost. Uh, all the nations we've already got it under here too in the Balkans, so that's actually really good. Uh, of course, we have the OFN, OFN. We have the Africa Shield still for now. They're gonna collapse in the Prosperity Sphere. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right. So what can we do here? We're four and two, huh? Oh, it's just one point. Keep, promise to keep Burgundy in check. Yeah, I'll be honest. I don't want to lose political power or stability or command power. So actually, I'd rather lose political power right now because we need more command power, which is weird to say. That is very weird. Hey, 11 billion, not bad. Hey, GDP growth is very, very nice. All right, conglomerate of steel. Which one are we doing next? Much to give. Regime stability will go down. A different kind of shutdown. A little game. Well, Dalmo Benz as a whole might deserve to be the best destroyed. There's little sense in doing so. Most of the cartel's worst successes are done via intermediate or intermediaries, leaving their good image intact. We can exploit this, decapitate the cartel, break it up, and put someone with a bit of humanity in charge, but let the core company remain. They could be a major employer, and with a little help, they could establish a new standard of quality for cars, giving us another highly profitable export. However, they will be punished severely. The entire board of directors, if complicit and flex crimes, will be prosecuted the same as their boss. Middle management is also rife with corruption and party line men, so we'll need to purge them too, albeit a less violently. Finally, every single subsidiary of the corporation will be torn away and sold off, further increasing the number of metal stand companies and permanently constraining Dalma Ben's power. Very good. So good. I don't need any more military... I'll be honest. We don't need any more military factories. I mean, we're doing really, really well. Even tanks are doing great. So, um, yeah. Do, oh, do we not have any... One thing we could use, I do notice here. APCs. Do we have APCs here? Yes. So, if we make any more, please hand them over. Alright, we're seven. We need something with three. Or two. Two, three. Oh, we could go over. Um, I want to see where they're at after this one. That'd be fine. Anything else here? Anything else? Conglomerate of steel. Investment? Nope, they're not. They don't. They're not worth it right now. There you go. Stalin at Frankenstein. Edmund Geileberg leads a monster into the Reich, and its name is the Reichswehrkam. It's a juggernaut of industry, only outdone in size and influenced by the Titanic IG Falcon Company. Being that it is an industrial conglomerate for ore mining and steel production, it comes as no surprise that Reichswehrkam is one of the most important empires to dismantle. If Germany wants to truly safeguard its production, Edmund Geileberg. Guy Labour, having recently become the new Wehrwachtschaftsführer, uses the connections he has to maximize profit and safeguard the existence of his home. Or his income, really. Because of this, maneuvering through Guy Labour's web will be proving difficult. There is, however, a spot of hope in facing this massive slaveholding company that threatens to undermine Erhard's plans. Of the four corporate giants, it is only the Reichswerke that is state owned, which, assuming she has cooperation, will significantly ease the problem de de limbing the monster. All that remains now is starting the process and make sure that Erhard can go through with it. Goring was a fool, but a useful one. Absolutely. Now this one taking this one takes a long time to kill this one off. The Siemens they're so influential. Um, I'm not sure it's really worth uh, worth doing. We need places that does not have many slaves at all. Like this place, it's not bad. Um, there are no slaves here. Oh, we got anti-trust directive. Yeah, why not? There you go. It costs 25 political power, which sucks, but hey, Denmark is looking real nice right now. That's awesome. Uh, slaves. There's just so many slaves in the Empire. There's so many slaves. Jesus Christ. Hmm. Jesus Christ. Mitte Deutschland, 5.6 million. My goodness. I want to see what the Italians have to come up with here. 
Okay, there's six. Looked it again. Much to give. If a uh, Dalma Benz has a redeeming quality, it is their eye for talent. The corporation employs many of the Reich's best engineers to design the vehicles. They also have many patents for advanced technology, which will be very useful when it comes to competing with their economic rivals. The R&D section of this cartel will be retained, minus a few criminals to be found therein. That should reduce it to a state more suitable to our purposes. We can then put them to work developing both military and civilian technologies for the benefit of the nation, its people, and our economy, rather than for the purpose of fattening Flick's pur purse. Regime stability does go down, but I'm not super concerned about that. And this is still looking very good. Still looking very good. And I don't want to spend any more PP on those guys over there because that would be a waste of PP for us. Um, after this one, let's go ahead and do a different kind of sit shut down. You know the drill. The harsh monotone voice of the half sergeant said, Go up, look scary. I'll talk to them. Gunshots start firing. F fire back. And you better darn well hope you don't hit one of the slaves. If you do, that's coming out of your paycheck. Not mine. The APC rocked over some gravels. The man inside nodded. What's that? He asked. I didn't hear my confirmation. The sign that shot in unison. Sir, yes, sir. However, what had been a simple interrogation process turned out to be much more. When the sergeant went up to announce that to the guards that the factory was being seized, that's when he spotted it. They weren't normal security guards. They wore a set of all too familiar clothing, and a bullet struck his combat helmet before he dropped to the ground and yelled into his radio that a firefight had begun. It wasn't a very long firefight. Half an hour later, the noise had died down into strange silence. Men, report casualties. The radio crackled soon back after. Sir, we have two dead and five wounded. He felt a pang of anger strike at his heart. Gosh darn SS, he muttered, turning over with one of his boots to see the symbols of the shoot stoffels emblazoned on his chest. Of all the companies in the world, these traders employ these a-holes. Spitting on the man's red-tinted shirt, he opened up the radio, ch radio channel again. How many slaves are wounded, soldier? He asked, and the reply got unnerved him. He didn't care much about the slaves. If the blood blast in her, sir, it seems like the SS started firing on the slaves after they in initiated a firefight with us. It's... There's not many of them left, sir. Understood, soldier. Take the rest and the staff for f the... Staff the facility for the night, and let us go ahead and do. I don't want to lose any more political power. The lives to save. Yeah, we're probably going to do that one. The lives to save. I'm all for going full steam ahead with the privatization of the Reich's vehicle, but there's a catch, as always. If the decartelization of the corporation is too fast and disorganized, the millions of slaves it owns could quite easily end up in the hands of our enemies. Once in private hands, assuming their freedom will become more difficult, not impossible, but more of a challenge than it should be. We have a responsibility to the oppressed. Their lives are worth more than anything we could hope to gain from the immediate destruction of Reich's vehicle. Though it'll give Geilenberg enough time to save some of his fortune, that's enough of a small price to pay compared to the saving thousands more lives. He'll still get his dang quarter that much, I swear. For now, we should privatize the Reichsvecca only to a limited degree and at a measured pace, so that we can ensure no slaves fall through the cracks to be denied their freedom. Alright everyone, so we're back here of course. It's December 1st, 1966, and we're doing partial privatization. The privatization of Reichswerke isn't turning out as profitable as it might have been, but continues at a decent clip. Entrepreneurs looking to snap up pieces of the cartel were naturally disappointed by a decision to retain majority state ownership, but it was a necessary move to keep the slaves safe from prolonged bondage. Once enough of the Reichswerke's assets have been sold off, the company will be put under new management, and the old executives prosecuted for the crimes. Never again will innocent people be sacrificed in the pursuit of wealth amid the smoke and fire of the Rhine and Ruhr. So I'll be honest here, I actually went back and uh, didn't give or assist Poland in um, giving them money. So I'll look over here. Yeah, Poland, I love you, but we need our PP in here in Germany. So just because this will flip again over and I've already spent a lot of political power towards here. But overall, not too bad. I'm enjoying this episode all so much more than the past few episodes, I'll be honest. Past is the past. Reichsvecke buyout, um, Führer Elsass, or Erlass, and Zukunft Musik. Is that future music? Hmm. Let's do Land of Diligence, because we're going to lose our pee, pee Made in Germany used to stand for something great. It meant quality of craftsmanship, and represented a proud artisanal tradition going back centuries. Not for nothing did Tommy and the Yanks joke about German efficiency. The corporations, however, usurped this label, with the advent of slavery during the war made in Germany became a euphemism for cruelty, exploitation, and humanity. Or inhumanity. For our products to become world renowned once more, we must reclaim our industrial legacy from the clutches of the cartels. Our blue collar workers are already doing admirable work in this regard. The new recruits are taking to their chosen fields with gusto. Aided by the expertise of the old guard, with each passing day, we come one step closer to shedding our shame and setting the gold standard for quality production. Followed up by the Council of Gods. Ajifab, and one of the world's largest conglomerates, as a blight on Europe comparable only to the NSDAP. They were with the Hitlerites from the beginning, missing no opportunity to profit from the late Führer's cruel barbaric ideology. Presiding over it from the shadows was Hermann Josef Abs, a true wolf in sheep's clothing, if there ever was one to be, to the party. He's an untouchable god. To the corporate world, a model executive. To us, the greatest threat we face after the field marshal Shona. We must break Abs' power politically and financially. Too long have his crimes gone unaccounted for and his sway over Germany unchallenged. As the world's most powerful banker, he has virtually unlimited resources at his disposal, so we cannot hope to destroy him by purely financial means. We must instead employ more direct means. To slay the beast, we shall bleed it out before going straight for the hot. Obs will regret the day he sold his soul in pursuit of wealth and the reformers. 
Top Secret, also Moment to all members of the Reichs, uh, Reichsnacht Rechtendienst Unternehmen Gehilfe. Iberian Union, Reichs, Reichsnacht Rechtendienst agents have successfully completed the mission of infiltrating the Iberian political scene. Apartments have been rented across from the common uh, council meeting places and surveillance equipment. Audio recording devices, see page 4. Have been installed in meeting rooms. Propaganda efforts to support and buttress reformist elements in the council have begun for specifics on reformist groups and backers. See page six. Liberal groups in the Iberian Council. Agents have developed posters and pamphlets similar in style of the standard reformist format for widespread distribution among potentially interested groups. Similarly, recordings of conversations that paint reformist elements in a positive light and conservative elements in a negative light are planned to be leaked to the various news major newspapers. Agents report signs of early success in the campaign seen by an uptick in registration among liberal parties and increased turnout to liberal rallies. Recommend that Unternehmen and Gehilfe be continued indefinitely or until proven to be no longer effective. May Germany be in safe hands. Who said propaganda wasn't useful? The usual a suspect with a crisp photograph of a heavily guarded house next to him. The vessel began tapping to Agent Red. Top secret info regarding the anti fascist action. We've located a house and redacted, and we have surmised that a significant portion of Antifa's core membership will gather there for a highly important meeting. The vessel paused for a second and wondered what on earth made them think this was a good idea. Caution is always advised, even if you've been under the government's notice for decades. Your mission will be as follows At redacted, past midnight, you will infiltrate past the security in the house. You'll be given significant amounts of explosives, and you will need to plant them across several weak points throughout the house. Once you have done so, you will leave the residential area and activate the explosives using a detonator that will be given to you. Leave no trace of your presence, as the police will be given full authority to investigate the scene in order to appease the students. If you are found out, you must either neutralize any witnesses you find and then escape, or, in case you are caught, by down on your cyanide belt. Thought, though Vessel typed out that due to protocol, he knew that wouldn't happen. The agent would either succeed or die tre trying, and as it stood, it'd likely be the latter. The rest is up to you, Agent Red. May Germany be in safe hands. This document is to be burned at reading. The clock strikes midnight. The hour of judgment approaches. Tick tock, tick tock. I got 20 here. Look at that. Also, we're doing France again. And we're at 10 and they have at 11, so. It's only step one, but. Very nice. Investment? No, 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 no. Oh, look at this. Unternehmen top. Top for kite. 74% chance of reading. Oh! Oh, that's some good chances, man. Oh, there's some real good chances. Oh, 74, 74. Mm. The R&D. We'll undergo its most dangerous mission yet. We know for a fact that Oldenstadt Bogen is one of the most dangerous intelligence agencies, if not the most, in the world. But Galen wishes to prove otherwise. He knows that Himmler expects agents to cross into the Black State. But Galen refuses to back down from the challenge. A foothold will be established, and perhaps we can hasten the downfall of the Rogue State. But we'll do that one when we get this one done, because it's three quarters of the way done. I'd rather wait for that. And over here, actually, so I've, since I've redone stuff, I actually got Brauschitzstadt with us. I've got this one of Obervolga. We've got Denmark. This part of Norway, actually, as well, which is really nice. And, of course, the Netherlands. So, actually, I feel like we're being a little bit more successful after I replay this already <laughs> within the same episode. So, here, I want to see his corporate assets, and then maybe middle class investment, and then antitrust directorate. So, we'll see what happens. But now, you, Berman Mauren. We're close. We're very close here to getting rid of Siemens. And they're middling. And, actually, Reichsvecke is powerful. But they're not completely 100% influential, which is a great, great thing. Also, anything else here? No. Um, stability is at 96%. That's actually really good. We're at 10%. And we have a new date for this stuff. Okay, cool. Awesome. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm, I'm feeling, like I said earlier, I'm feeling pretty good about this now. I'm feeling pretty good. Until the oil crisis hits and I just want to punch a wall. But that's for later. An enemy to prosperity. Attack from the flank. We're going to do an enemy to freedom. To heck with caution. No plant ever survives contact with the enemy. As Herr Spider would say, A.G. Farben is an enemy of freedom, and therefore an enemy of the state, people, and helpfully the Fuhrer. If they want war, they'll darn get it. And what better way to make <clears throat> a war upon a corporation than to deprive it of a workforce? A.G. Farben is wholly dependent on its millions of slaves to continue turning a profit. The executives have been digging their heels ever since the beginning of the Rockführung's program, doing all they can to forestall the inevitable release of their victims. But the schemes and litigation are no match for the might of our apparatus of state. All means at our disposal shall be directed towards the destruction of the corporation's slave network. A crude, imperfect solution, but supremely satisfying. Man, we just don't get pee, -pee at all, do we? We're, we're maxing it out. I don't care. We're going 100% reformist in this campaign for now, because there's still... i got to do the conservative side as well eventually, but... Mm, max that sucker out. 74%, 74%. Council of the Lords. Enemy to freedom. Yes. And now if we do this one, I almost always click on this, but if you look at this, it says we want to do this, it costs 10 command power, and we cannot avoid, and we, we can't say, we can't, you know, 
just get rid of it willy-nilly. We gotta save our command fire as much as possible, but sending the Wehrmacht. A good friend, Henning von Tresco, loathes slavery almost as much as he does National Socialism itself. Despite his blusters and slightly esoteric Prussianism, he is a man pure of heart and true to his Christian beliefs, including a hatred for all injustice. He has a crucial role to play in the coming struggle and it's time to bring him on board. Von Tresco understands the importance of sending a strong, clear message. The demise of Aji Farben and his vile master will be ours to the right, to the other corporations, and to the war, and to the world. They made slavery what it is today in driving a knife into the heart of the corrupt enterprise will prove once and for all that there will be no mercy offered to the wicked in our new order. Absolutely. Oh, and since we're here anyways. Alright, so we got that one done, which is pretty nice. Uh, recon satellites would be actually pretty good to do as well. Oh, our new organization. Growth factor. That's really not bad. 5%. These are all 5%. Camouflage looks seems really good, but let's do Antarctic Recon satellites, because that one can do us do this one here as well. So, so now, it's at 74% still. Maybe give it one more day. Happy 1967, everyone. I forget when the OI will hit, but okay, let's just do it anyways. Um, you know what? Like I said earlier, let's save. I'll, I don't mind saving, you know, in front of you guys. Because you see, look at how many saves I have. Look at all these saves. Look at this. Like, I will show you. This is how many saves I've got in some other campaigns I've done. Look at that. All these saves. Jesus Christ. So many saves. Alright. Let's try it. Anything? Oh, yes. Civilian stuff. Yes, please. We love helping out the civilians. Enemy freedom. Council of the Lords. Hermann Josef Arbs is not a man. He's a force. With his throne built on the backs of German victory, industrial technology, and piles upon piles of slaves, he rests on the profit of many companies. But there is one in particular that stands out, the company that serves as its true testament to Ab's profit-driven motives and the cost it that comes with it. Aji Farben is a chemical and pharmaceutical conglomerate. On a surface level, it is nothing more than a megacorporation pulling its strings across all of the Reich, its colonies, and further abroad than that. Under the helm of Hermann Josef Abbs, it has risen to become one of the most powerful actors within the government, not only having the wide-scale influence in large parts of the Einheitspact, but fielding their own private mercenary company, as well as a heavy, if not total, reliance on brutal slave labor. Having reaped the rewards of a victorious Reich, Abbs has certified his reputation of what it is to be as successful as a German. Alton active, he has crafted a carefully made image of a apolitical yet loyal businessman, serving the interests of the Reich. Yet under the guise of an honorable and capable man lies a bloody history driven by a single desire. Abs, under the wraps, is an incredibly cunning and ruthless man. It can be safely claimed that his economic empire stretches from sea to shining sea, that his business like, acumen remains one of the most unrivaled in the whole world. His reach extends to every continent, and Algy Farben only remains to be one of the many companies under his repertoire, with many more scattered around the world. In the homeland, however, this is where Abs makes his capital, and something can clearly be said about the IG Farben and its shadow ruler. It is a threat. A threat not only politically and economically, but morally as well. It stands as a testament of success to relying on slave labor. An idea unworkable in the long run, yet here it stood as a shining jewel in the pile of riches. If Erhard is to collapse this rotten structure from the inside out, all of his genius would be for naught, if not firstly invested into the largest threat that stands before him. A titan which will force Germany to bend under a system that cannot hold forever. Hermann Josef Abbs is a force. One that must be stopped. Number four? I do this one, why not? Cool. Sending the Wehrmacht. Yes. Sehr gut. Yeah, we definitely don't have enough PP. Limitless potential? Why not? With every... Even with the Ruck Forum's program in process, many old minority populations will remain in Germany itself. The NSDAP, brutes that they are, have they never let up on their insistence that these people be expelled, Germanized, or otherwise purged from the nation, citing racial purity as a foremost concern. Well, if I were as stupid and backwards as an average party member, I wouldn't talk about race. Any intellectual who isn't neck deep into national social science knows for a fact that all this talk of non-German inferiority is utterly tripe, even if they won't dare say so in public. Bohemia and Poznan were booming industrial hubs long before the Nazis came along and started driving the locals out. Now the Germanization is over. We can finally offer equal opportunities to the, these, these deprived peoples and begin healing old wounds. They have as much right to be part of the Reich as Germans do. An architect's blues. Another day, another cartload of problems. In his office, at the center of the Reichskanzlei, Reichs of uh, a fear of the German people, is tired, tired, and stressed. Even after the war's end, there is no rest. The reconstruction is proving more difficult than predicted, and the party bureaucracy is already starting to resist the changes suggested by the Gang of Four. Like the proverbial clay pop, Speer feels powerless to act. A small rift engulfed by the stormy sea, taken by the sudden need to escape, he stands from his chair and goes to the window. Perhaps it will do him some good to gaze at the great Germania he designed himself. Looking outside, a wave of memory surges from Speer's mind, snippets of life that was a mere decade ago, and yet feels as if it was another geological era, showing Hitler the progress made as the two friends left heartily visiting construction sites, directing the workforce, and finally the Vauxhall inauguration. The crowning moment of his life as an architect is a different age. One where the future looks glorious, not this maddening quagmire. The more he looks at what he's built, however, the more of a feeling of drag creeps over him. Why is that building over there still unfinished? Why is that apartment block so bare? The slots for the decorations are all empty. 
more than anything. Who is that incompetent who uses low quality stone for the walkways? They are already full of cracks and he finds more and more critiques he also feels something else. A need he has not felt in years. He wants to correct those mistakes to make them right but even more he wants something new. His hands itch, hands itch with this designed needed design to give tangible form to the things in his mind. How wonderful it would feel to be once more even for just a moment. Spare the architect. However, what is an architect without his tools? Note to self, bring the tools to office to work tomorrow. Standing in the Wehrmacht. An uneasy ally. Von Siemens is a scum, but he sees the writing on the wall and knows that his cartel's days are numbered. He knows that our threats are neither empty nor idle. He's a rat escaping a sinking ship, clawing at the vast threat of hope. He doesn't deserve our mercy, but if that's the price for his cooperation, then so be it. In return for amnesty, Von Siemens would not oppose the reorganization of his eponymous corporation. His promise to sit down, shut up, and hand over his slaves, illegal assets, and whatever else we demand, all in exchange for his wealth, his position, and his life. It sickens me to spare the snake, but the easier the easier this is, his whole process is, actually. The better. Anyone with common sense would do the same. Assertion. Richard uh, Ricard Abel felt a pang of nervousness when he climbed up to the podium and the rifle that was on his back felt heavier than usual. He hadn't done one of those speeches in a while, though he felt the basics returned him quickly as he approached the center. Taking a deep breath, Abel assumed a stern position and the cold gaze of his eyes was felt by hundred-something men clad in urban camouflage, sitting shoulder to shoulder with an aura of discipline almost matching their twisted brethren in the Oldenstadt. You've all been called here today by the Reich, he shouted, feeling just a tint of nausea at the last word. You've been specifically picked out for this operation. Your skills as a soldier, operative, and expertise in handling extreme pressure. There was a ringing silence when every pause, but he opted to ignore it. Tomorrow night will be the launching an operation to seize IG Fabin's slave factory. The factory in question will have paid mercenaries guarding them, and intelligence suggests that they even have an APC in the ranks. This matters not for us. We are soldiers of the Reich. The objective is simple. The facility will be struck swiftly, and it's your job to sneak into, outflank, and demoralize the mercenaries into giving up without a single shot fired. Remember, they are paid to scare the slaves into submission, and when they see the full power of the Reich, they are almost guaranteed to lay down their weapons but for their lives. So make every move count. Show them mercy, but let them know what it means to be afraid. With a stiff throw of the arm, Abel let a cry that the rest followed shortly afterwards. Heil Speer. Back to work. As everyone, except the security, leaves the Rax Kanzlei, a single light is still on. In the Führer's office, there is still someone working for the good of the German people, or at least what this is, the headlines will report, because putting a sign on the door saying, Architect by der Arbeit, Zugang verboten, would be a bit misleading. With his work completed, the Führer can finally punch out and let the architect take his place. Speer clears his desk and takes his tools out of the out of the case he had brought with them from home. They are old, but they still work just like him, and that's more than enough. He has awaited this moment for the entire day, and as he looks at this large, empty sheet, he feels like a painter staring at a blank canvas, ready to fill it with his art. All kinds of ideas swimming through his, uh, his mind, from tall, bold skyscrapers to simple houses and small villas. With a trembling hand, he takes up ruler and pencil and draws the first line. The first sheet goes straight to the dustbin, followed by the second and the third. Trembling lines and small blunders irk the perfectionist inside Speer, but more than five years of inaction requires some time to catch up. The full sheet, however, survives the initial scrutiny. In the end, he has settled on a public office, a classic of his old practice, as a jumbling mess of lines seemingly drawn randomly acquires purpose and forms itself into a skeleton of a building, a smile creeps, creeps itself on Speer's lips. He's finally free from the stress, from the obligations, from the quagmire, doing what he loves. After a while, the architect stretches his arms and looks back at his work. The essential frame, the easiest part, is done, and now it's time to start the real work. He looks at his watch and jumps, it's already past midnight. Best going to sleep, or tomorrow will be, tomorrow's work will be a pain. As he goes home, however, he can't help, help but wonder. Will his newest design ever become reality, or will it remain a small closet dream, one to be put into a museum after his death? I am the fear, after all. I might get might as well be selfish for once. Followed up with an uneasy ally and limitless potential. Uh, even with the Rockefeller's program in process... Oh, yeah, I already read this one, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to read about this one again, please go ahead. I, I can't avoid this one just because it really is political power, but an artist's dilemma. The architect looks with satisfaction at his work. The foundations on the main frame of the building have been painstakingly designed undone and ready to be built. From the quality of the concrete to the exact amount of steel bars needed to sustain the edifice, everything is specified with pinpoint precision and several side notes written in regular handwriting. Now it all remains is a facade, and this is where the true challenges begins. With a sigh, Speer realized that he has never bothered resuming his theoretical studies after he became entangled in the Reichspo Reichspolitik. Trying to survive in a world where most of your colleagues want to kill you is, after all, quite the demanding task, and now he curses himself for not having updated his knowledge. How is he supposed to finish his new masterwork? What will be the final stroke on the canvas? Looking outside for inspiration, he sees once more his greatest success with all its flaws and mistakes. Would it be best to follow in his own footsteps and use a style that forged Dramat into what it is now? To act as if nothing changed in the last ten years, for a moment he thinks of a new grand structure built in the U.S., with the new lines and glass walls. Is the future the way forward? To fully let go of the past and find a new beginning? With a last look to the Volkshalle, the final thought entered his mind. What if a third way is indeed possible? A fusion of old and new, of past knowledge and future design, a melting pot where both ideals would have to make a small sacrifice for the sake of art. As a fear architect takes pencil and fear and ruler once more, he has... He has made his decision. My crafted 
as perfect as it is, let's forget the past for the sake of art. I also pave a way for new architects to follow. Um, I kind of want to do that one. So, let's forget the past for the sake of art. Uh, hmm. Pave a new way. I mean, let's forget the past. I kind of want to do thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Forget the past. I mean, that seems like one we're going to go as performance as possible. I kind of want to do I shall pave a new way for the future architects to follow. I have that one. Bringing down Goliath. It was hardly expecting the day to come, so when did the Reich take this direction? Under the new Fuhrer, Abel figured, fighting outwards from the Rhine and towards Germania during the tumultuous civil war taught him a thing or two for just of how things could change so quickly, and how the new order can be just as volatile and prone to collapse as any other country. Though those things did not concern him tonight, as he waited until the clock would turn to a new day and then he would begin the preparations. A hundred men was perhaps overkill, but guaranteed the approach he was going for, a swarm of trained soldiers surrounding the facility would let them know it was pointless to put up a fight. It was funny, really, he thought. These same methods he despised were now the methods he was actively using to make sure no blood could be spilled. Though, unlike his superiors, he made sure to consider the fact that the slaves also deserved this protection. With a sigh, he brought up the megaphone near his mouth as it clearly arrived it, it, to his destination. It's been an hour since the operation began, so he was sure everything was in place, thinking otherwise would make him needlessly worried. In front of the large building dominated by lights and action, an armored vehicle bearing the flag of the right came driving casually towards the checkpoint. Seeing something like this at such a late hour roused suspicion, though the guards made no moves as the vehicle stopped up in front of the facility, and a man stepped out dressed in the colors of the hand, bearing a megaphone in one hand. With a click of the device, it came to life and Abel took a deep breath. This is Hauptmann Ricard Abel of the half speaking. To all personnel guarding the fa this factory, to all the slaves working in it, this is a declaration of the Reich. The guards seem confused. As of tonight, this facility belonging to IG Falvin has been seized by the direct orders of the Fuhrer, and we transferred over to the ownership of the government. Any attempt to fire upon the soldiers we have stationed nearby will be seen as an attack upon government troops, and will be treated with extreme contempt. The security personnel present and off-duty will be relieved of their work here, and are to be escorted out of the building effective immediately. He gave a short pause to see how they would react, and upon seeing the guards freeze up and understand the message, Abel continued, that is all. The light, crackling static of the megaphone abruptly ended when he shut it off. His job here was done. That night, no shots were fired. Hey, that's pretty successful, I'd say. I hope he gets five here, but, um, we don't have PP for this, but days of future past. Ah, yes, very cool. Uh, pause the game, please, please. Pause. Oh, oh that's very nice. Um, I want to do this one first. Limit this potential, because actually we lose even more political power. Ooh, you know what? Let's do this one first. Treating wounds. Never has been the so heinous of an act of imperialism as General Plan Ost. Under this insane scheme devised by Himmler's circle of evil, the economy of Eastern Europe was devastated in short order. Heavy industry was appropriated, economic centers raised, the population butchered, and a disastrous policy of aggressive agrarianism imposed upon the survivors. Even were the Reich to vanish tomorrow, it could take centuries for the region to return to pre war levels of prosperity by itself. It's too late to help the dead, but it's not too late for the living. While Germany's crimes can never be erased, the wound inflicted on the healing or healed can be healed at least to a degree. It's hard to say where our resources are best allocated to undo the damage, but has settled on Warsaw and Kiev. As the foremost hubs of Poland and Ukraine respectively, it just makes sense to focus on rebuilding them first. Germany has plenty of money and equipment to spare, and we have the responsibility to help the conquered. Scars will remain, but even they will heal in time. Thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. As Spear reflects upon his choice, suddenly the truth dawns upon him. Didn't the Romans take the Ark from the Etruscans? The columns from the Greeks? Didn't they study the Egyptians and their stylized forms? Yes. Did they make them any less Romans? No. On the contrary, they grew with everything they learned, every new notion, concept, technique they absorbed. They didn't accept passively the foreign influences, but neither did they remain closed in their own little world. They assimilated all following their criteria, everything put into the perfect place for it to shrine brightness. The solution, the breakthrough Speer needed, is there. The architect resumes his work, his mind a melting pot, slim, graceful stone columns hiding the steel behind inside them, just like his new Germany. Beautiful and proud, a steel gauntlet made inside a velvet glove. The glass would take new forms, curved and elegant, fitting into the facade's fronton, and reflecting the light into a majestic eagle holding the laurel of victory. A rainbow of colors, mitigated by the pure white of the stone, would marvel the visitors with his, without scaring them, a comforting feeling of brightness and warmth. As the first rays of morning relieved his tired eyes, the architect turned Fiora can out feel satisfied. This time, however, uh, the first in his entire life, he has created something entirely new, a new style, a new fashion. Perhaps it'll never take foot, but it doesn't matter. An artist works for himself first and foremost, and he finally understands that it, he is indeed still an artist. Now a new work awaits him, his masterwork, and the coronation of his craft to rebuild the Reich. To rebuild it into what it was always meant to be, a nation fully capable of embracing future without forgetting the past. As the cleaning staff opens the door and jumps, seeing the fear of stone side, Shapiro greets him with a wide grin. This is a great day for Germany, the first of many to come. A new dawn, a wonderful dawn, the future is now. Hey, that's not too bad. 17.6 billion, great. The days of future past. There was two more facilities seized after the first that Abel decided to personally stay inside one of those factories overnight. Before, he couldn't bring himself to do it, but now, after having gone through the same song and danced three times in a row with Ob's mercenaries, he was able to confront his actions and the actions of who he was serving. He'd been told that in a cold, cold place for... Uh, 
uh, for so long now that the dawn of a new day began to trickle in. Sunlight piercing windows and beaming on barely worked assembly lines and hollow slaves. He should have left an hour ago, he thought, but he didn't. There were no armed band, he could tell. Well, one that didn't bear the six-pointed star. They were all gone now, and Hauptmann and Rickard Abel's stomach sunk. The deeds of 20 years ago finally cut up to Europe and where he was during that long, long time ago. When the world was on fire and he was a match waiting to be lit and thrown in, he got his opportunity to strike the flame when he and only he encountered something that would break, make or break a soldier under the banner of Aaron superiority. Abel could so remember it, clear as stars in a pitch black sky as focused on the real world fading as his mind began to wander. It was a family of three, a woman and her two children, though he could hardly remember what any of them looked like. They lived under the house of a Ukrainian man right on the Donbass River. He didn't speak Ukrainian, and nor did he, the man speak German, but something about his desperation when Abel hit the butt of his rifle against the wooden floor caught him off guard. The begging and pleading that stuck in his mind made him relent. There in that house, there were no comrades of his, his. back when just to shoot the degenerate Slav. Instead, he was given a choice. Would he do his duty to the Reich? Then he would be congratulated as a Jew hunter. And what if he left them to be? Then he surely hanged as a traitor to the Aryan people. It felt like an eternity before something happened, but eventually Abel knew the path he would take. Now he stood here, surrounded by a cigarette smoke, a veteran fighter of Germany, serving for almost 20 years. Things had changed oh so much. He couldn't call his country reborn, no, but the winds had changed blue in another direction, yet they carried with them the lingering scent of blood. Yeah, it is what it is. Anything up here? Uh, yes. Infrastructure. Follow up with what? Anything down here? Yes. Yes. Cool. I want to keep an eye on this up too. And... Oh, we still don't have 30 yet. There's been a lot of events to read. Lots and lots and lots of events. Which, is, which isn't a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. Alright, so with this, we can either do stuff here or we can do stuff over here. Um, when did not... Actually, I want to give it, give it one more day. Alright, so there are nine. That's really bad for us. We need to get over here. Oh, we're going to lose this one. Because at best, we do this. I'd rather lose this one, honestly, just because we can get up to nine maybe by doing this. Is it, we lose so much political power, and we need that political power right now. So, one to one, I think we can lose this one. So, band aid. The smoke that came into view while staring through his binoculars confused him. Uh, for a second before he realized that no, Warsaw wasn't burning, that was just a cigar in his mouth. Still, he was surprised that uh, Speer rounded up enough political capital to get this many men out and that much, this much equipment. Perhaps it was simply the sheer obviousness of his arguments. Ehad chuckled softly when he remembered how Speer tried to argue against reinvesting into Warsaw and Kiev. Something vague about the Reich expressing strength by showing the Poles and Ukrainians that resistance wasn't meaningless. But even then, Ehad could have seen what he wasn't really believing in the argument himself. No. What was more likely was that Speer was a snake who thought that he could give a minimal darn about making the Reich seem to be more than just a crushing iron grip of Europa that needed to be removed. He was no national social, certainly, but he could see sense the reaction, or sense the reason. Or did he, perhaps, but he was too afraid of the clutches of democracy. Ehad found that both funny and frustrating, but before he could continue looking at the construction project mobilizing men and equipment, he felt a shake on his shoulder. Ehad, the voice said, and took it a moment to process that it was actually the project manager. If I may ask, why Warsaw and Kiev? Lowering his binoculars and turning his head, Ehad raised an eyebrow. Oh boy. Besides being a... Uh, uh, Potential industrial hotlines? Well, I suppose there's another reason for it. These are some of the most hardest hit areas of General Plan Ost, and starting here could perhaps earn us a goodwill than non Germans living in these areas. He could feel the cold gaze of the manager on him, only tamed by the fact that he was much higher up than the man. Well, Ehad started up again, returning to his own glare. Are you staring at me, zoning out, perhaps? He continued, voice filling with irritation and sarcasm. The manager gave no response, seemingly confused and worried by Ehad's words. So you're not out with it then? Is there something you wish to say, or do you perhaps have nothing to tell me? If not, go, then go. You have a project to be overseeing, don't you? You obviously it. The manager scrambled away. It took Ehad a solid minute to calm down after he left. What was he even thinking starting dialogue with a man like that? Perhaps some of this madness can be reversed. Alright, because I don't mind losing that one. There's not a good chance we'll win there. I, I just want to get rid of this stuff. Yes. We got it. Ah, Bowman and Maurin. They have waning support and Siemens here. No, get away for the stuff too, so. Eh, well, I'm, that's PP ro really well spent. So, one, two, three, four, five, six regions. Have no more slaves and have economically been, de you know, deprived of being hamstrung by corporations. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Cool. Anything else? Just in case. Uh, stability is 92 percent. And there, nope. Cool. And then future of their hands. No matter how much the old propaganda says otherwise, or how much the Volkische Dullard set Mein Kampf, we need the East. G Germany has, for some time, being reached its industrial capacity within current levels of technology and development possibilities. Only the East, with its vast tracts of land, bountiful resources, and remnants of Soviet industrialization, offers further expansion of physical and economic interests. No longer can the East be demonized or demonized as a suspect of subhumans, fit for only the harvesting of slaves, as part of our propaganda efforts. We must shift gears to depict the East as a rising star of the Einheit's fact. Without the state's endorsement, individuals and mental stand corporations are on likely to bother investing in the future of the East. German backing for Eastern industry and business is essential for the fostering of homegrown economies in the region. 
guiding hand. We need to have invested into all Eastern regimes before we can make. Oh, we need to invest in. Oh, crap. Oh, firm chain. Ah, oh, I should have been invested in them. That's fine. We actually have more than enough regime stability, so. I think at this point. Uh, ooh! Yes! Zukom's music. Music, we can do. Um, all these ones just require us to, like, destroy these. Uh, corporation so it's good we went through this part of the tree first now we're probably going to have to focus on the silver tongues wherever that is but Zukom's musique sparring siemens while a moral compromise is a sensible thing to do they will be dismantled dismantled dismembered broken on the altar of freedom but not destroyed they will endure chain and bound their leash gripped firmly in the hands of the state not until von siemens and the other executives are long gone shall they be considered trustworthy in the meantime they shall continue their work under our auspices and on our terms. No longer will slaves toil away on assembly lines, putting together Siemens-branded electronics while the company's directors grow fat on the profits. Their work will be done by free plate employees, and the just taxes paid. The mercy, extended only because we wish it to do so, is far more than Siemens deserves, and they had best remember that fact. We need so much political power here. Holy crap. Hey, we have 541 factors. That's not too bad, actually. 17.6%. Our, our total GDP is slowly increasing. French genocide in Syria? I mean, only if we had... I don't even know why that's available, I'll be honest. Just because we can't do anything about that. Like, we have no liquid reserves. Opening the doors, that's the USA Diplo tree. We did that one, that one. Actually, they just auto-bypassed for that one. Toronto Accords, we can wait for that stuff. We can go on the left side, then. Solve the Velma problem. We'll do that one next, after you do the Silver Tongue. Elhard and Schmidt have to have their time in the sun. Now it's time for the Partei Councilor to shine. Cut Jörg Kiesinger is Speer's deputy Führer, serving as head of both the party and the Reichstag. With ha both halves of the apparatus of state secure, Kiesinger's role in the Führer's grand design will be front and center in the coming months. A meeting is in order. Kiesinger is a dedicated and professional career politician, but needs proper direction from the Führer. Left to his own devices, who knows what, is, what he might do. Thankfully, he is far less ambitious than his fellow cabinet members. Working with him should be a lot easier for Speer and less controversial in the Reich's political circles. The inevitable. Glasses cling together as Ludwig Erhard and Helmut Schmidt sat together in one of Germania's finest restaurants. Of course, one that had less obvious Nazi imagery, as both men found that it would lower their appetite and give them a low sense of unease. But now they were here, Erhard drinking a small glass with strong alcohol while Schmidt was more modest, deciding on some wine instead. With a pleasant sigh, the Minister of Economy spoke. The resignation trick works every time, really. I wasn't expecting him to be so asinine about it. It's like I was asking him to end state elections. Schmidt let a short laugh. No, God, no. If it was like that, then I think he'd ask you to res resign instead. Erhard himself chuckled and would have reached for a cigar that had that not been allowed in the restaurant. I suppose, however, that you can tell me more details about this plan of yours, Schmidt asked, prompting Erhard to sober up a little and listen to what the foreign minister had to say. Yes, Erhard began nodding. It's quite simple. It's just that the plan will take some a long time to implement. I'm aiming for Germany's colonies to industrialize sufficiently, you see. Schmidt nodded. If we want them to stand as partners, we can't be so reliant on the old home that any economic crisis would make them buckle and crack, just as it happened in the 50s instead. You're going to, with my help, turn all those colonies into shiny rich tools. Not on par with Jimmy itself, but at least enough to be a little self-sufficient. Schmidt nodded again, this time more clearly satisfied. A smile graced his lips as he spoke. But what are the consequences? What do they demand? Independence. We'll give it to them, Erhard stated flatly. Eventually, if Speer isn't a fool, he'll let us build a base to feasibly stop exploiting them. If he is a fool, however, Erhard sighed. No need to worry about hypotheticals. Another drink, Helmut? Yes. Ya yeah, bull. Drink up. Expertise is 51%. Not bad. Alright, anything else here we can do? That's really nice to actually have. I want to get rid of these guys, but I want to wait to get more command power. I don't want to... It's not wasting PP, but... It, it's better if they have, they have fewer slaves, and just seizing the assets is probably best to do. Alright. There you go. And I assume we have something else. Oh, there you go. We need so much PP, man. 87% is really good. Alright, so we are at 7 here. 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3. Oh, we could probably do... Oh. Yeah, why not? That doesn't hurt us too much. At worst, we get 1. At best, we get 3. So, hey, global force, why not? Overwhelming support, sure, why not? Wow, look at that. Look at that deficit. It's only 4.3 billion. Wow. Nice. And actually, I haven't, I haven't really shown you the social stuff yet here. So, this is looking pretty good. This is getting better. This is getting better. This is, poverty's getting way better. Holy crap. Yeah, this is looking really good. Army professionalism, it's slightly not good, but it doesn't really matter right now. Okay, so we need one point here. Ooh. Ooh, one point. Uh, they still might go over, so I want to wait. We can wait first and see what happens. Um, we're at eight, 92%. 92%. We can actually do some of this stuff, which would be good to do. 
I don't know. Is it is it better to invest in these guys first? Well, we have to invest them anyways. I want to at least dismantle the Siemens first. I want to dismantle them. We have to dismantle them. The silver tongue. Yes. Um. Yes. Oh, we don't have enough command power. We're, we're really close, though. How much do we get every single day? That's a little better. We'll do it once. There you go. The silver tongue. Good. Your Kisinger is a powerhouse of charisma, but he couldn't do things alone, not unless he had coordinated with his plans with the Fuhrer. Unfortunately for him, his relations between him and Speer were much better off than the rest of the gang. So, when they met, it was during a walk in the Volkshall, traversing the cold, long, and massive halls of that place as they spoke. Go over your plan, will you? Speer asked, and Kisinger found it, it simple to oblige. It's a several step plan, in no particular order. I would like to deal with the three issues first. It is difficult to keep conquest held, especially if it is from people that hold contempt from us. Wouldn't you agree, he asked, and Speer gave a worry nod. I propose a solution. We can either reform the Reich's commissariats into natively organized collaborationist governments, or turn them into the Reich's landers. There would be a more separate but equal deal, not preferable and potentially unstable, though it would, be, it would please the conservatives. Speer flagged open his lighter for a cigarette. The other two problems? Kisinger, Kisinger nodded. The second is the issue of slavery. It's killing us, and we'll need to tackle it carefully. That is a plan I will draw on later, but all of us must cooperate on it. The last is dealing with the economy. Besides the mega corporations, we'll have to revive businesses and... Shapiro's face contorted into a slight annoyance. Speak with Earhart. I'm aware, my fear. Don't worry, however. I know how to deal with them. Shapiro let it outside, so that's your plan, then. In that case, I advise you to begin as soon as possible. Kissing Kismat, of course, my fear. After all, there's no better time to do what must be done than now. Look to the future? Oh, that's not too bad. Dine with Earhart. The cancer that is killing the Reich... Cleansing this. Oh! Silent workforce will benefit from this. Oh, we lose so much baby! Holy crap! The fate of a conquest? A lighter hand? Or under the boot? Ending the policy of Germanization? I'll be honest, man. Why would you ever want to do that? Um, covering up the crimes. Stability's nice. Stability, national debt will rise. A chip out back? The fate of a conquest. Let's do that one. Oh, although militarily secure, the Reich's old conquest remained an unsolved conundrum. The Burger Creek saw the total collapse of central authority outside Germany, with everyone from hardline party men to native partisans making power grabs. Though all such direct threats to our authority have been dealt with, we must have said the future of our eastern conquests. They cannot continue as they are forever, but nor can we simply abandon them. The Gang of Four, as well as the majority of the reformists in the Reichstag, believe that the Fuhrer must accept that we cannot continue direct rule from Germania. In lieu of continued military occupation or colonial rule, they will see the Einheitspact reformed into a hegemonic union of the Reich and a collection of satellites or protectorates. It would make non-Germans far more amenable to working with us and prove our good intentions, but at the cost of considerable loss of direct control. Conservative elements of the NSDAP have been brought in line with the Fuhrer's way of thinking. Propose the continuation of direct German rule over our conquests, with politically acceptable natives serving an auxiliary role in our administration. Though arguably a betrayal of the reformists, perhaps we cannot afford to compromise our authority. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, you know what? Since we're waiting for more command power, and actually, that's, that training is going up like pretty quickly. Anyone anyway, presents stability. Oh, we're at nine. Oh, give them two days. I don't mind investing in Poland now once again. Since we have so much PP. Hey, there we go. Look, see, sometimes waiting is the best thing to do. It really is, sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. 91% stability is fine. Um, we will have to invest into our PP again sometime. You know what? <sighs> Screw it. We'll do it. Invest in Poland. Because we got to get all these done before we get to that other focus. So, that's good. That's fine with me. Mm. Nice. Bueno. A lighter hand. Decrease. Oh, holy crap. Our regime's ability to decrease by 50% to create collaborationist regimes in a conquered territories. Oh, oh my gosh. 50. Bad word percent. Um, really, it's only cost us. I'm going to do that one then. Holy crap. Well, let's do that now since we got a lighter hand. The reformists are right. The writing on has been on the wall for years. The rising of the partisan movements and the Polish Home Army have proven for good that the Einheitspact can no longer be a sham alliance of masters and slaves. Conservatives will be outraged at this administration, but the German people have bled enough for this East. Continuing to try and impose their will on the Slavs and other inhabitants of that region will only lead to further pointless bloodshed. Though we cannot simply see total control over our old conquests, the natives know their lands best, and placing domestic affairs back in their hands would be a wise decision. It is doubtful whether those who lived through our decades of rule will ever come to appreciate the Reich, but perhaps this way. The Trojan and ours will find a measure of trust and respect someday at least that's the plan wow wow that's a lot of regime stability loss but we can get some more night now yay oh, jesus christ the cancer is killing the rock i don't mind doing that one but establish a new identity um establish a new identity 
No longer will foreigners think of Germany as a merciless overseer who motivates its subjects with the whip. Yes, our rule in the past was difficult at times, and there was much strife between ourselves and the conquered, but the time heals all wounds, and brings with it understanding. We have all learned from our experience, and now the right can change accordingly to suit the times. Henceforth, Germany shall be as a benevolent lord, and those who once called self humans will be our vassals who live in a peaceful, mutually beneficial arrangement with us. Some might call this the continuation of imperialism by other means, but those who know the Reich's inner workings understand that this is the most just and even handed way forward. The Fuhrer is a man of peace and understanding, and his concessions to the conquered will prove it. We can invest more, but um, mini media manipulation would be good. Uh, research. 5%, 5%. Oh, more growth. Cameras. And we don't have enough exper expertise for any of this stuff, really, so that kind of sucks, but whatever. It's fine. Yeah, we gotta wait. We just don't have the, the command power that will just give out freely anymore. And I do know that we will have to invest in propaganda again sometime. Oh, we're still nine. That's good. That's good. Don't have to go all the way up now. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, operation failed. It seems like our mission failed in the objective. Whether it was due to a lack of technological advancements or an undeveloped budget or an understaffed and untrained agency, the R&D has lost some of its pride as an effective intelligence agency. The president is displeased to hear this news, though he does not expect guaranteed success on every operation. The R&D will recover, and you can only hope that it will get succeed the next time. The rest is in your hands. Well, that sucks. What's the point of doing it? It just fails, you know? 79% chance. Dönitz is a traitor to the Reich. No matter what any R&D agent may think, he has refused to return the rightful territory of the Crimea back to German hands as well as the fleet he stole during the Civil War is an unacceptable crime. Speer has authorized a two-pronged mission, thus coerced resignation of the old admiral and a coup of his military government. The R&D should make quick work of both. Well, we'll see. We will see. Um, a lighter hand. A lighter hand in the east. Cool. Civilian investments. And let's do Ukraine next. German mismanagement and slavery has severely damaged economic and political stability of the Ukraine and the surrounding areas. Much of the Ukrainian industry is outdated and is built on forced labor camps. An unsustainable uh, mm -mm, economic practice which must be right if we are to pursue that Ukraine will prosper and flourish in the future. Yeah, we have to do that. 37%. My bad words. Oh, look at this. Fate of the East. Divide Oslin. Divide into a free Baltic state and a Belarus state? Now that the Reich's grip is recovering from the perils of the Burger Krieg, Speer has decided to establish a loyal collaborationist government and the Reich's conquest. They'll be our loyal puppets. Um, how, I, I don't mind doing that, but I want to get the investments done, maybe? Or, will that uh, make them expire or something? Well, do a new identity as well, but is it worth doing yet? I don't know. I mean, you, I like the Ukraine. Create a loyal Republican here. A collaboration regime would be set up in full. Let's try that one. In two days? Honestly, I really do. I don't know what's going to happen. Is that worth doing yet? It seems like it would be. And? Um, did they change it all? Vakovyak? No, he's still here. Okay, well, all, well whatever. Yep, okay. Helicopters? Why not? And? What else do we have here? Divide Oslin? Is this worth doing? I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. I, I don't know if there's a penalty for us to do this. It seems like it, this is what we should be doing. Synthetic oil would be nice. We've got so much money invested or the budget's freely available for us to use, but, uh... Alright. Oh, look at that. Baltische Bund. Thais. Thais and Ostrowski. Remember this old run? Very nice. Anything else we can do here yet? No. I do want to kill this one off, so let's wait to get here first. Establish a new identity. Covering up the crimes. A subsidized societal development. If this new arrangement were merely imperialism, we would simply continue the old policy of economic exploitation. That is patent patently not, not the case, or at least it won't be once Ehrhardt's economic schemes are put into motion. The lands we conquered are part of the greater German Reich, so naturally they shall be treated appropriately. Healthcare, education, industry, agriculture, all these and more will be directly supported and subsidized by the Reich government. Where a lesser Führer would simply have used the Reich's wealth to turn the East into one giant factory, Speer will build an economy that the people of the Einheitspakt truly deserve, one that is free, fair, and safe from exploitation. The common Slav can surely appreciate that as readily as a German can. Can as well. I don't mind doing the 50 ones, but I'm going to wait and use our intelligence agency for it from here on out just because I think it'd be best. I guess reorganize it. I guess. Caucasian freedom? I, 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 I guess. Oh, there we go. We definitely need that one. Alright. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Ukrainian National uh, Republic. Kubyochevich. Awesome. And then we have Bagration. Wait, Bagration. Hmm. 
And then we have Call to Gunther von Hasse. That's actually really cool. Like, this is looking really, actually really cool. The Einheit's actually looking... Oh, they have their own pact. Oh, they must not have joined the OFN or uh, these guys yet. That's interesting. Cool. I mean, I think that's actually really awesome. Anything else here? Hold a speech. We have 38%. It was not too bad. And we're 8 now. We need 2. Ooh, that's risky. That's really risky. You know what? Like normal? I'll make a save. I just, like, I've made so many saves for this campaign. This campaign is probably I've made the most saves I've ever done in any campaign before. So, um, sure, why not? We'll try it. And then, covering up their crimes. I suppose if we have to. Unfortunately, we are not quite done with the East. Or with most difficult parts of our legacy in the East yet. To put it in a politically incorrect terms. The East was our slave pit. From where countless millions were dragged to fuel the fires of the wartime industry. And that of peacetime as well. As if that wasn't bad enough, it's rather obvious which individual bears a good deal of responsibility for those morally dubious missteps. There's much work to do for the R&D propagandists to do. Citizens of both the Reich and the Einheit Pact must learn the correct version of events as well as the most appropriate interpretation of them. The truth that many yearn can, can for can never be. For it would undo the Reich and all the good our Fuhrer and his cabinet have done. Perhaps it will come to light regardless in the distant future, but for now, for now, we must have our necessary fiction. Uh, I'm not going to do one yet because I want to actually maximize uh, performance outlook. So, give us a few days and we'll get some more stability. And we'll get uh, enough PP to invest into propaganda. Because we can. Mm. Oh, infrastructure, yes. Anything else? Not yet. And, come on. There we go. Campaign in progress. Nice. So, that kind of hurts with the command power, but we don't have to spend command power immediately. We've maxed out our PP usage right now. We can go and do this one as well. That's fine. Whatever. Even though we don't have PP for that. And, yeah. Uh, the perfect scapegoat. Typically, a scapegoat has little to do with the problem at hand. We know better than anyone, since finding people to blame for all of Germany's woes works as a core part of the Reich's propaganda efforts for many years. However, the scapegoat we have in mind for our modern narrative is guilty enough already that nobody will be mind a few more crimes being inscribed to him. Of course, if Heinrich Himmler doesn't want to be remembered in the official history of the Reich as the most evil man in history, responsible for immeasurable suffering throughout Europe, maybe he should have saved a chicken farmer. As things are, we couldn't have asked for a greater villain for the history books. Liberty with uh, Collaboration those who derive the new national socialist paradigm fail to understand the realities of our situation. In place of a racial hierarchy devoted to running an extractive economy, we've built a strong cohesive union of fledgling states nestled under the Reich's Adler's wing until they are properly matured and can be treated as equals. Any government in the free world would have done the same thing in our position indeed. They have done so in the past, dumbing it nation-building. Our efforts are condemned as collaboration. Well, we happily embrace that label. Of course, there's collaboration. The Slavs, among others, now collaborate with us on many things, the economy, social development, science, technology, and the benefits from it. Yes, they are beholden to our interests, but who can cause tyrants when we have done more for the Slavs than Americans has done ever done for its native population and planning rebellion. Oh, crap. The back alley of the Kurupstrasse in Frankfurt was a damp and dingy place at night, rarely visited or checked by any of the passing guards, flanked by four wings of the local Krupp factory, each producing their own variants of metal works. It was a perfect place for meetings of the more secretive kind, indeed. It was this exact reason why the man suddenly stood against the wall waiting for his comrades to join him. One by one, they made their way out of the blocks they called home, sneaking over the same wall and avoiding the lazy flashlight beam that occasionally flicked down the road. When the last conspirator, a man of some frame, squeezed out of a hole in the wall of his barracks. <clears throat> And slid over to the wall, the first man blew a, relief, a sigh of relief. He was the one that the first man prayed would return. So, Erasmus, how did they respond? Oh, a wing, wing A is ready. They're practically chomping the bit to go now. The second man barely held in a laugh of glee. Holy crap, it's all really coming together. I never thought I'd see the day we all grew balls and went after the Germans. It's a gosh darn miracle, Mikkia. So the third man, a faint smile crossing his lips. Out of all the men, he had been a slave for the longest, toiling for years over his machines and tools away at the mercy of the Nazis. Finally, the slaves were taking back some control. Jan, you wanted to be the first one to start the fight, didn't you? Asked the first to the third. Jan's smile widened again. Mikhail, you don't even have to ask. I start myself, or without you. Then it's settled. Mikhail straightened himself up, shifting his uncomfortable slave uniform around. Tell your friends we're going in three days. We'll overpower the guards, capture the factory, and get out. And then, Nikita asked, and then, Mikhail continued, we're free. What are they up to? Hmm. Well, under the boot... And, uh, looking towards the future. Our immediate economic woes have been addressed, but now we must turn to planning for the future of our economy. The other great powers continue to enjoy massive economic growth that continuously dwarfs their own year after year. Though more of the population is employed or undertaking education, the mega corporations still near how near absolute power or control over the job market. The Fuhrer knew this moment was coming. He saw it years ago, dreaded it, and did all he could to save it off, but there's no avoiding it any longer. Time to call air hot again. Enemy aircraft downed. My Fuhrer, I have some reports... Uh, something very interesting that just happened within our borders. Albert Speer stood up to bring a chair forward, then sat back down with his hands on his desk. What do you have for me? The Fuhrer asks, a stern look adding to his shadowy voice. 
The officer took a seat and began to recall what he'd seen earlier, a few hours ago. The local radar station in Westphalia detected a foreign object in the skies. We attempted to establish communication with it, but once his efforts failed, our Sam fired on the object. During the tech, we realized it was foreign aircraft, and on the plane crashed about 20 miles northwest from Dortmund. Do you know where the plane came from? Albert Speer inquired, leaning back in his chair and interlocking his fingers. Here's why the situation is so good for us. The pilot survived the crash, and when we captured him, we found out that he came from the U.S. Apparently, the Americans were testing out some kind of new spy plane and then used our country as a test site. Unfortunately, the photos were taken and have already been sent back to the U.S. The pilot is refusing to give up any information. We can certainly torture the pilot for information, but we need to be careful while the Americans still have the photos. Nevertheless, we have an American hostage. If we play our cards right, we can have what we want. Now, how badly do they want him back? A crash, a shot, and a revolt. Oh, crap. A crash rose above the standard noise of the factory floor, and like the moment after a thunderclap, all went silent. The guard who had been slowly making his way around the floor perked up for a moment. It was not often that he got to punish a slave anymore. Indeed, for the last few days, he had been more quiet than ever. He had not only been the one to notice this. The guards in the other wings had complained about the slowness of the last days just as much as he had, of course. He was sure that the executives who watched over it didn't mind. Less disturbances meant more productivity. Now, however, the guard had his chance to finally enjoy the power of his job. The other slaves seemed to part like a wave as he pushed his way through the, to the offender, an older man who the guard had seen and punished m many times before. Splayed out across the floor lay the box of tools the slave had been using. A foolish errand, one that would not go unpunished, let the guard. Pick that up, stated the guard, pointing to a wretch that lay close to the feet. The man did not move. The guard smirked. A rebellious streak had always been apparent in this one. He resolved to teach him a few lessons in manners as he pulled out his baton. Quickly and forcefully, he punished, pushed the man back with it, planting the tip squarely at the slave's sternum. Pick it up, boy, the guard said again, louder and more threatening than before. Still, the man did not move. The guard responded by striking the man to the ground with a swing from his baton. Finally, the slave crawled over to the wrench and picked it up, standing as he did so. The guard smiled his victory confirmed. His smile would remain on his face until the slave, whirling around, slammed the wrench directly into his jaw. The guard collapsed to the ground, stars whirling around his vision. In a mix of anger and rage, he reached out for his gun, raising it towards the rebellious ingrate. He shot... His shot went wild into the ceiling as a multitude of hands grabbed him, knocking him back to the floor and wrestling the pistol from his hands. Across the factory floor, the sounds of chaos replaced the previous silence, and the guard could only wonder how long the slaves had waited for this day before he lost consciousness. The revolution has begun. Oh boy, that's not good. As I'm looking back over here for anything here we can do. Um, Opening the doors. Oh, I actually might do opening the doors just to get more political power right now. Digging in. In the chaos of the Krupstrasse, one man made his way quickly through the crowd of slaves. Jan still held the wrench that had started the whole affair close to his chest as he pushed through the turmoil, searching for his fellow leaders. It was a difficult task, made more difficult by those who recognized him trying to give the com compliments and praise. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity of pushing and shoving, he reached to the other three, Mjaktka, Mikhail, and Rasmus, all stood on a metal ca catwalk above the street, watching as hundreds of slaves either make a break for freedom, grab the weapons from the now wide open doors of the factory armories, or barricaded to the streets in preparation for the inevitable police response. As Jan joined them, Rasmus' eyes locked onto a chain of guards and executives all being led into one factory's hostages. They were not the only ones. Took longer than we thought to clear out waiting for, but we got it in the end. Look at that. Look at it's the man of the hour. Rasmus turned to Jan, a smile crossing his face. How'd wing two go, Jan? Perfect. I really needed that son of a gun who went after me. If you see if you guys see a guard with a bad word up mouth, tell him I said hello. How about you fellows? Wing 1 and 3 went smoothly as well, uh, Mikhail champion, though Wing 4 took longer than we hoped for. The men there didn't realize that we had started until the guards began locking down the place. In any case, the whole plan succeeded so far. The men looked back onto the street, watching the turmoil. Jan's eyes lashed onto the group of slaves, currently making a break out. Or making a break for it out into Frankfurt. They reached the corner where the Kupstrasse turned onto another street, then froze. Suddenly, each of them dashed back to the barracks, inaudibly shouting. A wave of commotion swept through those who were still inside the barricades. As each of the leaders turned towards the frenzy, the source of the chaos became apparent. Three police cars sped past the corner, sliding, sliding to a stop with a screech of tires. They sped off just as quickly when a hail of panic gunshots rang down the street, bullets pinging off their cars as they got out of the area. The four men looked at each other, each realizing what was to come. I'll get defenses up, Miyaka said, turning to the stairs. Be prepared for anything. And brothers, if this becomes our last stand, make sure that take as many of them with you as you can. The men said nothing, for there was work to begin. The siege begins. This looks like it's all collapsing, but we can probably do one focus, opening the doors. It's time for our fatherland to persuade the Americans to lift their embargo. And it's also time for us to open the doors to Europe to the West, and for the West to do the same for Europe. We can no longer exist with a barrier between us. It is best for all of us to remove the wedge between us. A captive pilot. Um... Oh, look at that. After our diplomats exchanged some information, the Americans are now fully aware of their pilot being under captivity. President Wallace F. Bennett is furious that we're refusing to let the man go. Already, he has made it clear that the U.S. wants its pilots back, but right now, we're in the middle of squeezing information out of him. No matter the outcome of this new crisis, we need to make sure the Americans do not try this action again. We have two options to take. Either we can give in to the President's demands now and send the pilot home, losing respect and prestige, or we can hold on to the pilot until they give us the photos they took while we get more information out of them. Nope. Escalate it. Which gives us more political power, which we need. 51% stability? Very, very nice. Oh, we're actually... We tied! Look at that! 10-10! Oh, actually, we didn't tie! We didn't tie! Ooh! Very nice. Investments, investments, investments. And I'm gonna just get one more focus on... We can just be... Ooh, that's not 
bad. Regime stability doesn't go down, but we just improved it. We lose some national socialism. We need that political power. We, we really do need that political power, so I'll not even contend with that. And let's get through one more uh, event or so first. Not, no everyday patrol. Oh boy, look at that. Johan's patrol car was not used to moving so quickly and screeched in protest to being treated so roughly at every corner inside the car. Johan himself listened intently to the police radio. It was a struggle to make out independent factor statements with this amount of information flowing in. Tears of escaping slaves caused havoc throughout Frankfurt were swiftly cut off by reports of general chaos, multiple, multiple gunshots, and increasingly flustered radio operator trying in vain to restore order on the airwaves. None of this mattered to Johan. He had his orders and he already knew what he was supposed to do. Two patrol cars, evidently headed to the same station or location as he was, fell in behind him as he continued to ward down the main avenue. Avenues. Cars lay bent at the side of the road as the police cars roared past, evidence of the growing chaos that was engulfing the industrial side of the town. Finally, Johan and the others pulled up to the perimeter that had been set up and witnessed a scene of pure chaos. While the street itself was empty, the police presence had been enough to scare any running slaves back to their holes. A full block had been abandoned to the rebellion, with the perimeter having been set up just around the corner from where the rebellious factory was located. Worried, angry, and above all else, confused officers chattered to each other, setting up their own police barricade. Johan stepped out of his car and made his way to the nearest face he recognized. The sergeant quickly snapped to attention when he saw the captain approach. Vokmai Stashnida. Status report, if you will, Johan said curtly. That's like nothing I've seen before, Obust uh, Leutnant. They flipped containers and made them barricades, and they boarded up windows and doors. They've got weapons everywhere. They've built a darn fortress. Schneider panted. Johan kept walking, uh, heading towards the corner that stood between the police and the revolters. He stuck his head out for a moment to confirm what Schneider had said. Even the Johan had fought in the Civil War, his mouth nearly fell open at the spectacle of a barricade, defended by the slaves still in their work clothes, armed to the teeth with rifles, pistols, and shotguns. It, indeed, was nothing like he had ever seen before. His shock was so great that it took Schneider to pull him back around the corner when multiple bullets cracked off the wall. Herr Obstleutnant, you see what I mean, yes? Schneider asked. We're going to need the Wehrmacht to fold this. Oh no, it seems like this is going to be a slave revolt. We're so close to getting this one done. And we're removing Siemens' power, so... Oh, 12%. That's so close. God dang it. But... I think we're going to end here because we need, I need to take a break from this. But if you enjoyed this longer video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I will see you tomorrow when we will stop having, a ho hopefully, an annual deficit and maybe have to deal with a potential slave revolt. Thanks for watching and have a great, great, great rest of your day.